one of the most technical fights of all time between the two best bantamweights in the world, Piotr Jan and Corey Sandhagen delivered one of the best fights of the year so far. They showed high-end technical striking, surprising wrestling skills, and the ability to predict their opponent's next moves, reading almost every situation that was happening in the fight. Piotr Jan and Corey Sandhagen should both be considered scholars from the amount of reads they made in this fight. I mean, it was insane. Piotrion would attack with a certain combination, see that it failed and missed Corey, he would go to it again under a different circumstance, and use what he read in the first exchange for the next to work. This happened multiple times, even for Corey Sandhagen, same kind of thing. For an example, Corey Sandhagen toward the start of the fight, he would use his reach advantage and switch into the opposite stance to grab the lead hand of Piotr Jan. Generally, he wants to get into the opposite stance Jan is in, so his lead hand and Jan's hand are closer to each other. This allows him to hand trap Piotr Jan's lead, and he used it in the beginning of the fight to find an opening there. After one use of this, he goes to it again, hand traps Piotr Jan, and sees an opening down the center for his straight and lands that cleanly on Jan. This would work multiple times in the fight, and Corey picked up something else about landing this shifting right hand on Jan. He started to use that without the hand trap, seeing that there was more opportunities off of it. He was seeing that he can just simply shift from a distance, switch stances, and land his right hand. The mistake he made here against Piotr Jan was that he moved away. He got the read down, he downloaded that data right there, and tried to escape and reset the action. But on the exit, Jan was able to hunt him down with the left overhand. So this showed Corey Sandhagen that Jan is definitely going to hunt him down if he tried to exit away. So he uses this shift right cross read, gets in there on Piotr Jan, and very similar reaction happens here. Notice how the first time Jan picked up his knee when Corey got in on him, he does it again here. Seeing that Piotr Jan plants himself when he does this, there's an opening for a left body hook. Corey does try to get away again, but again makes a very similar mistake, gets caught by another hook from Piotr Jan. So after getting caught twice on the exit, he tries this yet again. He reads that situation and adjusts again. He shifts in there with a right cross. Jan gives him the same exact reaction, picks up his knee and plants himself. But instead of going to the body or to the head after this, he kicks out the leg instead. He uses the shift cross to land a heavy leg kick that ultimately takes off the balance for Jan to pursue him on the exit. So now Corey is able to move away from Jan safely. Or what about this excellent read from Corey Zanagan? Before he was pumping out some jabs, getting into the same stance as Piotr Jan, and Corey saw that Piotr Jan was trying to pull away, move his head away from the jabs, as well as try to parry them. He also was throwing out naked left hooks, and also angling on that same side. He had two reads here. Number one, he saw Piotr Jan was blocking that left hook, he was coming to a tight right guard, and he would normally plant himself after blocking the punch. Also, Corey saw, this will give him an easy exit, so after throwing this left hook, he saw that it was pretty easy to move out that same side and Jan was not pursuing him at all. This played out for the majority of the fight. Whenever Corey Sandhagen was throwing that left hook, he was able to angle off and move away on that same side and Jan almost never pursued him. It normally takes Jan a little bit longer to face Corey Sandhagen to follow him on his own right side whether that be in his orthodox stance or his southpaw stance, as they both kept switching the entire fight. Sanega was able to use that left hook no matter what stance Jan was in, and escape any kind of pressure Jan put on him, as well as just trying to angle off and find some opportunities. And the opportunity, the opening that he did see, was to be used in the same combination that he had the jab read on. So he used both the left hook read and that jab read against Piotr Jan in order to land to the body. So he goes and throws that left hook and Jan covers up on it, plants himself, does not engage just as Corey predicted, and Corey shifts into the opposite stance. He goes right into southpaw as Jan was also switching stances backwards. Remember, Corey is trying to mimic the same stance that Jan is also in. Jan was moving away and trying to parry the jabs just like he predicted, and this left an opening to the body for a left hook. This is another reason why he shifted into the southpaw stance to put up a lot of power into that left hand of his. Another great read. From Corey Sanhagen. Or another example from Corey. Notice here in the second round, he goes out there with a left hand trap. He uses this to enter distance into Piotr Jan, ducks and makes it look like he's gonna attack low. This lowers Piotr Jan's levels and ultimately gets him to fall into a right uppercut. So the low feint baited Jan to lower levels with him. He tries to do a very similar thing in the fifth round, but after seeing this one time, Piotr Jan was able to make the adjustment. From seeing it three rounds ago, he makes the adjustment. Corey Sandigan hand traps Piotr Jan and uses it to hop shift to the outside into southpaw. So he's using it to hop to his left and switch stances into southpaw, angling off on Piotr Jan and facing him. This gets Jan on the defensive and gives Corey some forward momentum. And now here's when it becomes very similar. He ducks low, 
throws nothing out there, and Jan again lowers his levels. His eyes are off of Corey Sanhagen, but knowing from the first exchange that an uppercut landed on him, in a split second, he was able to slip on the outside of the punch. So Corey Sanhagen's reading ability is amazing, but as it showed right here, Piotr Jans is on another level. So even how great Corey Sanhagen's reads were, they did not match what Piotr Jan was able to do in this fight. Piotr Jan was reading Corey Sanhagen like a book from start to finish, and it's a reason why Jan had a tough first round with Corey. He was losing the majority of the exchanges. It was ultimately because he was trying to read everything. This is what he does in every single fight. He's trying to read the opponent, not engage too much, not pressure too much, not be offensive, but mostly stays defensive and looking at what the opponent's trying to do. A great example to look at to understand how great Jan is at making in-fight adjustments and reads is by looking at the shift combination he focused on to get in and hit someone longer than him like Corey Sanhagen. Firstly, the shift combo is an excellent attack used for both great range and power by stepping and switching stances forward with the punch, which is going to create a natural coverage of distance. You're naturally going to be able to cross a lot of distance while doing this. This generates natural momentum into the ending punch. Dustin Poirier is famous for this combo, where he likes to use it against his longer or more mobile opponents like Max Holloway, Conor McGregor, Dan Hooker, Habib, etc. Because Jan and Dustin Poirier, for an example, are two guys that don't have a lot of mobility in their style. They like to stand in front of the opponent and they don't normally move around the cage like some of their peers. So Jan is going to use this against Sanhagen to get in the correct distance on the much longer fighter in order to land his power shot. He fell short with it the first time he threw it. He got in a bit closer but ultimately backed up Corey too close to the cage which ultimately gave Corey an exit laterally instead of linearly. So he wanted Corey to move back in a straight line which is what the shift combination is made to a catch an opponent on that straight line. So then later he allowed Corey to pressure him in or to back him away from the cage and then throughout the shift combination catch him at the end of it added on to it and threw out a spinning back fist after missing the left overhand it might have even have been intentionally because he knows that Corey likes to pivot around the opponent which ultimately gets him intercepted by the spinning back fist and then added on to it again and instead of throwing out a spinning back fist, he threw out something even bigger, a spinning hook kick. So it didn't even matter if he was failing or succeeding in this combo. If he was missing or landing it, he kept finding different things to add on to the combination, showing how much of a perfectionist he actually is. The punch wasn't enough, so he needed to add a spinning back fist. The spinning back fist wasn't enough. He needed to add a spinning hook kick, and all of these shots are landing. He wanted maximum impact, maximum effect with the adjustments he was making. If there was more time or more rounds in the fight, Piotr Jan would have added even more to this. He would have found even more things to add on to this combination. So in detail, the way he started this was by throwing out there a jab, but you have to notice that he is pretty far from Corey Sanhagen. He's in Sanhagen's reach. That jab falls so short, it didn't get anywhere near Sanhagen. But Jan still engaged for the shift combination in order to see how close he can get on him. So he throws that long left overhand and switches stances with it to really extend the range on that punch. You also have to know something very important here. They are not that close to the cage. Sanhagen has room behind him to move backwards and that's exactly what he does he moves straight away from the jab and left overhand and ultimately angles off to his left that safe angle he took for the majority of the fight Piotrion in this sequence saw that his combination fell short so he knew he needed to get closer to Corey Sandhagen in order to land this combination but how is he necessarily going to do that so as you can see right here, Corey is keeping a bit of a distance between him and Jan. He's extending with his lead hand, looking to hand trap Jan. But Jan takes his hand away and lands a body kick. This is also going to be very important for later in the breakdown. Jan kept landing a body kick the entire time, and Corey standing and just generally did not block any of them. Jan knew from the start of the fight that Corey was not defending body shots, specifically a body kick in either stance. It didn't even matter. The guard was almost never there. So Piotr Jan used that read on the body kick in order to get closer to Corey Sandhagen, so by landing it, he does not bring it back into position. He does not retract his leg back to where his stance was. He steps with the body kick, moves forward at Corey, switches stances yet again to cross even more distance forward, and now look how close he is to Corey Sandhagen, but there is one problem. Corey got a lot closer to the cage because of this. Piotr Jan engaged in pressure a little bit too much, and you'll see why here. He goes and throws a jab in order to set up his shift combination, but you could just see it already. Corey is L-stepping on him. He's angling off to his right, off of the straight line that Jan's shift combination usually falls on. The jab misses, 
and the overhand definitely misses. Corio is able to get off the center line and switch the positions and now get Pietro Jan close to the cage. There was way too much pressure from Pietro Jan, so he made another read right there. So he knows two things here. Number one, he has to find a way to get a bit closer. But at the same time, he doesn't want to overly pressure Corey backwards. So going for the body kick again is not something he's going to be looking for, as that's too easy to push Corey back to the cage. Because when Corey's on the cage, he can only move left or right. There's no more a straight back movement. And Jan knows that Corey will move backwards if there is space behind him, because the first time he threw it, Corey moved straight backwards. So what does he allow Corey Sanigan to do? Instead of pressuring Corey, He's going to allow Corey to pressure him because by Corey pressuring him, he's going to take the cage away from Sandigan's back. And the way he's going to get in close on Corey is by allowing Corey to throw first. Therefore, he can avoid the punch and counter him. So he's pretty much setting up this shift combo by allowing Corey to lead the fight. And that could be a very risky thing for a fighter to do. But it just shows how confident Jan is. Corey throws out a jab, which Patreon parries and finds a way to get in with a fake right hook and then a massive left overhand landing on Corey. Once this sequence happened, every single time that shift combo was landing, and not just landing, Jan kept adding things to that combo. He was never satisfied with one way of landing it. He needed more power, more devastating shots, and more effectiveness, even though it was already successful. For an example, in the fourth round, Corey was pressuring him more and he was looking to hand trap. Look how he reaches with his left hand and leans his body forward. This gives Jan the green light to engage on him. Now to get away from the hand trap, he can't really throw out the same kind of jab. So he flares out his elbow even more and delays the jab before throwing it. So he's digging his elbow into Corey's hand and then flicking out his jab. And look how close he gets after this. Corey moves back on a straight line again and gets caught by a massive left straight that stuns him. A few seconds later, they're in the center of the cage. Jan is extending with his left hand and Corey sees an opening down the center. This is another opening that Corey saw in the fight. Whenever Jan was trying to trap Corey's lead hand, Corey always saw the opening for the straight. So he goes for the exact same thing in misses and that's when Jan knew to engage for the shift combination again as Corey extended himself. He goes in for that big right hook which gets blocked by Corey because of the overextension Jan was able to get close and land a big left overhand as he shifts into it and afterward Jan made another read. He knew that Corey Sandhagen liked to pivot off whenever he would miss a punch. So whenever Patreon missed a big overhand or a straight, causing him to overextend, Corey always wanted to angle around him on the same side the power hand went through. So if Jan would throw a left hand, Corey Sandhagen would move on the outside of the left and angle off on that side, staying pretty close to Jan. By making the shift combination reads and the read that Corey angles and L steps around punches, he goes out there and throws another shift combo, but this time he uses something to intercept Corey's pivot. So here, Corey Sanagan is actually just leaning forward. And this is after getting knocked down, which severely changed his posture in the fight. His defense was not the same anymore after getting dropped by Jan in the third round. His defense was mostly out the window after that. So he was much easier to hit in the fight. For an example, naked left straights were catching Sanagan every single time afterward. In another example here, Jan just pumps out a jab from a distance and this time actually lands it on Sanagan. Sanagan does not move away, doesn't try to slip on the punch, doesn't parry the punch, nothing. Just takes a full on from a distance. And by landing this, Pietrion extends into the shift combo. He throws out that long left overhand that misses. Sanagan did not move his head off the center line. Pietron just had a bit of a bad aim there. Or it could have been on purpose. And what does Corey Sanagan do right afterward? He switches stances, pivots, and angles on Pietro Jan, gets right behind him as Jan throws out a spinning back fist to intercept Corey's movement. This was excellent work by Pietro Jan. Jan made another adjustment afterward and threw in another spinning attack with more power at the end of his combination. He pumps out a jab as Corey's leaning forward again and lands on him. This causes Corey to lean back, ultimately planting himself in space. Jan throws out a winging left overhand which misses, but this is ultimately to set up rotation and momentum for a huge spinning hook kick that lands over the guard. This is just insane. I mean, the amount of adjustments he made after each single shifting combination became different and more impactful. Even in the times that Corey did not make much of an adjustment against them, Pietrion was still able to find more things he can add onto it to make him even more effective. Crazy, man. But Jan didn't just make adjustments for his own offense. He was also reading what Corey Sanigan was doing to him and then either using it against him or countering him for it. For an example, that shifting right cross from Sanigan would start to get countered. He would normally get hit by it, but after gauging the distance on the punch, he was able to start slipping on the outside of it and track down Corey Sanhagen's exit. Because remember, every single time Sanhagen would throw some punch like this, 
he would always look to exit off an angle, never wanted to stay where he was. And one way Putron would track down Corey, knowing that he normally rotates pretty slowly to face his opponent, as Corey's looking to angle off, Putron would extend his hand, keep it on Corey, and use his arm almost as a lever, so when Corey is rotating around, he's also going to rotate Putron. This gives Jan natural momentum and rotation to land a big left straight on Corey. Or what about another read Jan made against Corey Sandigan's left movements? Now something I have to note here, Sandigan was getting different results moving to his left and moving to his right. When he was moving off to his right, he was getting hit by almost everything. He was moving into the power hand, he was getting hit by high kicks and stuff like that, getting stunned, just eating a bunch of shots moving off to his right. The safer play was mostly moving to the left. Jan was having a bit of an issue tracking down Sandigan's movement to the left until like the fourth and fifth rounds came where he started to find uppercuts instead. He had that one sequence where he did land the big left straight, but for the majority afterward, he started to find left uppercuts. He would again use the same thing he did, where as Corey is pivoting and angling off to his own left, Pietro Jan would extend his right hand and grab onto Sanhagen, acting as a lever to turn into him and throwing up a left uppercut. And there's another defensive read that Jan made in order to track down Corey's movement again. Corey Sanhagen is in the orthodox stance and Pietro Jan is in southpaw. This gives a natural opening for Sanhagen to land that right hand either to the top or to the body. Sanhagen did not target the body too much in the fight, so ultimately, in this sort of position here, he would target the body for a right hook. And he caught Piotrion cleanly. Always after a punch, Corey Sanhagen would pivot off an angle every single time. But the thing is, Piotrion read that situation immediately. So less than a minute afterward, they're in the same stances. Corey's in orthodox, Piotrion's in southpaw, and Corey would parry Piotrion's right hand, opening up for his right hand to land to the body. But it does look like it gets blocked by Piotrion as Jan made an adjustment. Instead of standing still in front of the punch, this time he backsteps and pivots away to not only overextend the punch, but to face Corey Sanhagen in order for himself to track down Corey's left movement. He intercepts him with a right hook and then lands a left overhand. So you could pretty much just see here, man, Piotrion was finding solutions to almost everything Sanhagen was doing in the fight. And like I said before, man, the craziest thing about all of it is, Sanhagen is one of the hardest guys to read. He's one of the hardest guys to make adjustments against because he's so unpredictable and he's so flashy and he's long and tall. I mean, that kind of distance and range is not something Bantamweights you usually fight against. And ultimately just gives me confidence against almost anybody Patreon fights. But like I was saying, man, Corey's jab was the main disruptor in the fight. And Jan had a very hard time with it. From start to finish, it was really the biggest thing he did not make much of adjustment on. Everything else he adjusted on, he made improvements and he started to capitalize. But the jab was the main thing that he couldn't. And it ultimately keeps Patreon from downloading data at times. I mean, if you overload the data, he's not going to be able to read the situation as clearly. And this is something that even a guy like Aljamain Sterling was able to do to him for the first two rounds. Sanhagen used a similar kind of game plan against him, just overloading the data. And because of that, Jan was never able to make an adjustment on those jabs. He tried to parry a lot of them and even counter with light kicks at times, but he didn't go to those for the majority of the jabs. I mean, they were disrupting him for the entire fight. Another thing from Corey, though, that was getting to Pietro Jan, it was Corey tapping the closest side hand to Corey's lead hand. So normally he would be an orthodox when he would do this, so he'd always try to tap the right hand of Pietro Jan with his left hand. With this, he got many different things out there. Number one, he would trigger out Pietro Jan's counter shots. By tapping that lead hand, Jan would swing out a big right overhand instantly, and Corey was only trapping him by doing this. On the overextension, notice how Corey Sandhagen pivots around him and starts throwing out jabs. But another thing he was using this for was to set up his front kick to the body. And that worked for the entire fight. Tapping with his lead hand and throwing a front kick to the body almost at the same time confuses Jan at what's going to come at him and if it's going to go to his head or to his body. Jan then kind of mimics what Corey does here. He taps with his own lead hand, but instead of going to a front kick to the body, he goes for a round kick to the body instead. And other than that, man, Patreon had amazing pressure, able to bait Corey Sandhagen into moving in certain directions. For an example, right here in the fourth round, Corey is on the cage, heavily pressured by Putrion. He pumps out a jab and Jan looks to parry it, but he gets a bit too late and he pressures forward behind that, knowing that Corey always moves on the same side he's throwing the jab. So if he's throwing a right jab, he's moving to his right side. He pressures Corey on that side, which causes Corey to redirect the other way because now there's a bigger opening on that side. Jan pressuring to his own left is filling in the space on Corey Sandhagen's right. So Sandhagen redirects, tries to move out to his left, 
and that's ultimately what Putreon wanted. Notice how Jan threw nothing when Cory moved out to his own right and waited for Cory to move out to the left in order to intercept him with the right hook, left hook, and then right body kick. And this ultimately leads to that spinning back fist hook combination. So he threw it three times in the fight, but the first time he threw it, there was really no setup to it. He just threw it from a distance. He stepped across to set up the spin, threw out the spinning back fist, which got blocked, and then threw out the left hook, which also got blocked. There's a lot of rotational force in this kind of combination because you keep that momentum momentum going after the spinning back fist, making the hook even more powerful. But with all that power and the obvious setup for the spin, this makes this combination way too easy to see without masking it behind anything. You can't really throw naked shots like that out there from a distance against a guy who's longer than you. You really need to set it up and get it close on someone like Sanhagen. So what happens is, Piotrion starts moving backwards, and Sanhagen goes to the body, but he lands really low with the right hook, foul shot, but it does not deter Piotrion at all, man. He walks through the low blow and uses the overextension on that punch in order to keep Corey closer to him. Instead of him getting closer to Corey, he allows Corey to get closer to him. He throws out a winging left hook, which ultimately Corey was able to pull on, and then Corey gets complacent. Literally for the entire combination, Corey does not move anywhere, and that is very uncharacteristic for him. He normally is always moving around after slipping on punches, after landing his own. For one of the first times in the fight, he avoids the punch and then stands still with his hands down. It's almost like he was taking pictures like he was watching a movie out here and forgot that he was in a fight. Piotr Jan lands that spinning back fist and glances with the left hook. And after that, Corey Sanhagen was not the same guy defensively, but at least he had great wrestling and grappling defense. He was using a knee shield to keep Piotr Jan off of him and also started to attack the leg, not to get the submission, but just to reverse the position. And even where Jan was trying to get his back, Corey did a very good job of hooking under the leg, relieving any kind of back take that Jan could have gotten on him, and ultimately just turned around and stood up. In the fifth round, he even defended the only takedown Jan went for the entire fight. Just simply sprawled on it, and in the fourth round, he also took down Piotr Jan. And ultimately, that is the end of the breakdown, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.